What is up, everybody? My name is Dane Thompson. Welcome back to another episode of Burn Down. So today will probably be a quick episode, but I didn't want to leave you guys hanging on the uh, fuel cell in tank fuel pump install. Man, that's a mouthful. At least I got it right in one shot. Um, I ordered some parts. We pretty much did everything wrong. If you watched the What's Happening video, uh, I wanted to pull my hair out by the end of last Sunday because everything I tried to do kind of didn't work out. And then I ordered parts and I even ordered the wrong ones. So come, you know, the following few days when my parts came in, I thought I could complete this thing. Um, it didn't work out. So a little bit different plan of attack. So this is kind of the part two to that whole debacle. But this is the part where we actually put the thing in and I'm gonna go over all of it before we get it done. And I figured I'd bring you guys along. So hopefully we can just get this in, throw it in the car, and then maybe we'll take a look at lines and see how far we get. Uh, it is the afternoon. I don't have a lot of daylight, so let's get cracking. First and foremost, show you where we left off. So we got the thing basically mounted. We got it to fit in the hole, and then we had the problem with fittings and that whole nine. So this is what I decided on doing. If you watched the last video, I even had people comment, hey, Dane, why don't you just run them separate and wire it outside of the tank? Well, I didn't want to. I thought it'd be cleaner to wire it in here and come out with one. And then I realized my return is already in the tank like a dummy and I'm just fighting myself and I ordered other parts and it was wrong. So this was the right way to do it. Although I do have and they do make uh, for future reference, they make a dash eight bulkhead that goes to a barb fitting. And then you could just wire these one connection here and both pumps would come out of one, which would be slick. That's what I wanted to do. So for instance, in the Twinnebago, um, I'm going to change back to the original tank. I've got another one of these that we're going to set up um, in the Twinnebago and pull the plastic tank out of there because I have problems trying to fill it. So on that one, I'm going to need both. So I'll need a feed and a return. Granted, that's a single pump tank, but if it was something similar to that, um, you would do the two. But again, if you just use this and we did the eBay fuel cell setup, um, I could probably just eliminate one of these and just have a single feed. But let me know what you guys think. I guess... We could always do the two just for options and you can cap one off, but I don't know. So anyway, this is how I'm going to do it. We'll run dual lines and then I got a Y fitting. So this is an eight. So we'll run dual eights to this and then we'll run this into the filter into the existing line there. So that's how we did it. Um, I also had a buddy hit me up and say, hey, you guys put heat shrink on those. The 85s is probably going to chew it up. So um, if that is the case, it does not matter if these are exposed other than if they are exposed and they touch obviously you know negatives and positives or positive on this guy so we're going to combat that with some zip ties and i'll just do the little chain link zip tie thing to kind of hold them so that way they don't touch each other or go anywhere and then we'll just zip tie this bad boy on here we'll throw one here so it doesn't move around so even if it came off um, there's no way it's going to touch anything that's important and then we got to put the little guys around here. I got these on as best I could. These are a pain in the Royal Arse. So we'll clamp those up and hopefully that's good to go. Um, I did buy this, but it's funny because it, this is even worse to put on than this stuff. So I was trying to kind of fit it over the barb. So that's as far as we got. I put some heat on it. I feel good about it. And uh, we'll just clamp these on and call it a day. So that's where we're at with that. Let me kind of get it all set up. I already set the height. We cut the little nub off. So we are pretty well good to go. These are nice and tight. This guy's tight. I threw some silicone on the bottom of the all thread so we don't get any leaks poking out of the top. So let me throw some clamps around here, a few zip ties, and then we'll slam her on home. And I think I'm just gonna silicone, you know, do like a little silicone gasket ring and call it a day. Ta-da! All right. <laughs> it's not the prettiest thing, but I basically linked all these together and then they can wiggle together. So even if uh, the heat shrink bloats and falls off, we got the socks, so hopefully they don't get sucked up. And there's nothing it can hit on because it's kind of isolated for the most part, right? Right, that's what I'm telling myself. I'm good with that. So uh, you gotta have something hokey, right? And if I have fuel problems <laughs> or I explode, it's because of that. Anyway, we're gonna drop this bad boy in now. So that is my peace of mind. I have no idea if this is ED5 rated. Uh, you guys can probably yell at me and let me know. Maybe we'll have to take a peek at it because I'll be able to see it, I think, in there from time to time. So 
if I see bare wire, we'll have concern. And if not, we're good, right? That's what I'm telling myself. Let me slam this thing on home. Uh, maybe we'll clean the car out and kind of put this back in place. Then we take a look at the uh, hoses. The day kind of got away from me. I had some stuff to finish up this afternoon, but we'll at least take a look at what we're up against. We'll get that handled hopefully this weekend. Uh, let's go. Okay, so I don't know if this is a genius idea or a bad idea. I think I'm gonna put a little bit of silicone on each one of these before I thread it in. That way there's, I've got my little gasket made. Made a little bit of a mess, but I went around all the holes and then in a circular manner. Then I think I'll put a little bit on the threads just so it doesn't bleed up through these. And I think it should be good. I guess I could Teflon tape these, but um, we'll just goop it. I like the goop. So I'm gonna goop each one of these and then we'll slide it on home and they'll tighten it up. This thing is gonna be looking fancy. <laughs> All right, check that out. That is the nicest homemade deal. Well, it's actually not homemade. It was made by Joey, but I'm gonna say it's home built with the help of very talented individuals. The other thing is killer. We got the little pumps in there, down in the sump. Everybody's tight. Everybody's happy. We got silicone down. We got some zip ties thrown in the mix. So the next thing will be to make the lines figure out which way we want those to go and then I'll probably secure this um, somehow something like that or something we'll find out I think my battery's on this side so we will see where the lines go and just get everything nice and clean so real quick before I let you guys go this is just a quick video yeah I like dust man dirt so here is oh it didn't work let me try again Okay, so here's the hole in my trunk where that piece comes out. And then there is the filter that I've got my pressure gauge. So if you watch the episode where I put this in, I had a lot of fueling uh, issues. So I put this pressure gauge in. This lets me know if that filter is plugged because this will go up higher than what my regulator reads. It always reads a little higher. Obviously, you lose uh, due to the, the volume and the, the run length run of the line but with a fresh filter i can fire it up and i'm a few psi higher back here and i just mark it and that way when it goes up you don't have to just check your filter you know that the filter's dirty so we're going to leave this um and then i've got the sock so i had a pre and then a post i'm just going to leave this and then we got the socks in the tank and that should suffice um and then i think i'm going to jump the lines out of here somehow we may have to cut away more or whatever and then we'll cruise it on over to there maybe i could do a bulkhead and we'll just do a soft line jumper something like that we could be really slick with but um yeah we'll find out so on the next one we'll make some lines and we will keep this party rolling i finally feel good that i got something done even though it took way longer than it should but we'll get the fuel cell stabbed in place get the line made fueling is done um, I'm not gonna wire it up front or whatever. We'll just do it back here call it a day Because the stuff I had already made six and some change at the tire So I know with more pump we can at least make that uh, if not more so we're, we're fine with that We'll cross that bridge if we get there if we run out of a lack of fuel Which you gotta be making some big boy power to do that And then still waiting on Brian Tooley and then the swap meet is on Sunday so I have to get a new I'm just gonna get a whole new oil pan. I know it sounds excessive, but they make a cheap like knockoff Holly version And then that way I can do the oil drain on the same size as a turbo and that kind of cleans that up So we don't have oil drain issues. So I've got a plan. We got a bunch of stuff going and then um, A few more things. I'm gonna raffle a motor and then we'll have enough money to get an ARC panel And then we'll do some crazy quick wiring. Hopefully Joe can come help me and basically sort that out And then we are close. Stab this thing in after an oil pan. I don't even need the spring. I can do that in the car So we are getting close Things are gonna go back together. Got the new converter from Ryan Jans that is spec for this thing. We got a little more converter on her, a lot more motor. This thing's gonna be fun. And then possibly, I got new wheels. We might try to squeeze uh, 275. So let me know what you guys think about doing that. I think I'd like to squeeze one in there and then I can always run the, the 235 or the eight and a halfs, but I have the option of the larger tire. And I think just all in all, 
it might just be a better deal uh, to help amateur hour over here go a little faster. But let me know what you guys think. Till next time, hopefully you can still see me. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell everybody, I'm out.